Hey, what's going on everybody? So today, we're gonna to be diving into this 1949 F1 Ford pickup. We got king pins to replace, we gotta replace the king pin bushings. We're gonna to have to ream them out and then hone them out for the correct size for the pins. Once we do that, we're gonna get the backing plates all cleaned up, get ready to put back on, gotta repack the bearings, get the front brakes on. Once we do that, we can get this thing on the ground and get it out of here, because we've got an 08 bullet Mustang coming in for a supercharger kit. Got everything sitting right there in the box. And this one behind me here, this Mercury Zephyr, already got all the parts for that. We got to get into that too. So uh, stay tuned and let's get to it. what's going on thanks for checking out the channel so today I was just going to go over um, changing out kingpins on this old 49 Ford F1 um, I've already actually replaced them I've already got the new bushings in and I'm doing my final hone on the bushings to get them to fit the pins good I was just going to go over the technique that I used to do this um, yeah it's pretty simple just takes a little bit of time and uh, I'll just uh, show you what we got going on now. So as far as getting the pins out, let me turn this camera around. Here is the old pin. Both of them were pretty much in the same condition. The bushings were wore out really bad in this. The pin itself, I mean, it's got a lot of surface rust on it. Um, I didn't even check into actually getting just new bushings. I just got the whole kit. The whole kit came with new pins. It came with new bushings. It came with the uh, uh, bearing, the little dust shield, and some, and some washers. And also, it comes with the locking bolt. This locking bolt goes into the actual, actual straight axle here. It goes into the straight axle like so this hole is tapered this is tapered a little bit as well but that hole is tapered where it will only go in one way <clears throat> and then these notches will always face out towards the pin so that basically goes in there like that and then there's a nut that goes on this side of it when you pull it tight it pulls in there goes in just like a, a taper would all pretty much like a um, tie rod in taper so basically took the old nut off got a punch tap that out and that was the easiest part of doing this whole job <laughs> so once I got that I'm gonna call it the lock pin or lock bolt whatever you want to call it once I got that out I did go ahead and remove the grease fittings See, there's a grease fitting there, and then there's one there. On both sides, I removed both of them, just so I wouldn't break them off. <clears throat> then I used a ball joint remover slash installer tool. This is one that I've got, and I was lucky enough for it to work. I've got this screwed in just barely. This part here, it actually slides in and out, and it it won't spin when you turn this. It's just a collar that sits in there. So the problem I had with this particular one, see they, they have these that are a lot larger. Um, so if you run into a, a big truck, obviously you gotta have a lot larger or longer uh, tool. But this one, oh, let me sit this up here. Just kind of mock it up. So let's say the pin is still in it. Um, basically, I sat this on here on top of the pin. This top hole right here is large enough for the pin to push up through. However, that was about the same size outside of this bushing. So what I had to do was I just sat it up here. Actually, I had to do it on this side. 
and it sat down, the top sat down over the old pin because the old pin was sticking up. This pin, the top of this, it's got this big washer deal that's kind of part of it. It does spin, but it's just kind of locked in there with a little bit of a, they got it notched on the top. Anyway, that actually went through here. That would fit. So what I did, so I just sat it on there and I kind of made sure that that pin was gonna go inside this hole evenly. I even had it lubed up a little bit so it would slide up in there. Then I started out with a little nut. So I brought it down just like that. I sat this nut on top of here, <clears throat> lined it up with the center of the pin from the bottom, and then I was able to screw this up and I used my, um, my air gun. And once I got it up in there, I made sure that this nut was gonna line up inside the hole here and basically just crank down on it until it popped up. Now, the passenger side, it popped up no problem. Once I got it popped loose, I was able to use my air impact with a flat tip and dry that one right out on this side. It, it, just, it just drove right out, no problem. But not for this side. The driver's side was locked up. We put heat on it. We, I mean, we did everything and it just would not budge. So what I ended up doing, the other pin actually is in there. It's over there in the box. I noticed this was cocked sideways just a little bit inside here. So what I ended up doing was I got my little rat tail bit that I use for porting, which I don't really port no more, but I used it on the air tool. And I got it in here and I just grinded down. I didn't touch the sides here, but I only grinded down the pin. What I found was it had a burr like really bad burr on the top and the bottom so once i got that grinded down i was able to pop it loose once i got it to move up with my tool of course i ran out of room because this is not going to give you much movement once i popped it loose i tried with the, the air hammer and it still wouldn't go so then i had to go a little bit taller and i used this to get in there between here and the pin. And of course it took a lot of pressure, but it popped up some more, but I couldn't get it to go anymore. So then I ended up knocking it back down and I just worked it back and forth. And finally I was able to get it to go up in there further. Then I got two of these where I have, I got another one that's longer. So I got that one and they were able to pop it up even more. So I kept doing that until I had a pin about that long. And once I got it, once I got that pin driven up about halfway, then I was able to use the air tool, the air hammer to get it right out. So that's how that worked. That was a pain in the ass, let me tell you. The other side, not a problem, came right out. So as far as the bushings, I just used some sleeves to drive them out. They came out pretty easy. I just used these. They were perfect size. They were large enough to go in the hole on the spindle and they were small enough to fit the bushing. So I just drove them out and you know, from top and bottom. And once I did that, I cleaned everything up and I used, I just so happened to have a lifter bore home. And I used this to clean up the bores before I drove the new bushings in. And then 
I'm not going to mess with that side since I got it sitting up there. I also cleaned up this and got it all cleaned up, cleaned up with a brake clean. So then it was kind of ready to go. Now, at that point, well, even before then, I put these bushings in the freezer. They were in the freezer all day long. That afternoon, I had everything cleaned up. I put a little bit of oil in there and they drove right in, like no problem at all. Since I had them in the freezer, they got so cold and they froze, which kind of you know makes them shrink a little bit. And I just drove them right in. I was able, actually able to drive them in with my rubber mallet. Because you don't want to, you don't want to flatten them in any way. But these bushings, they come smaller than the pin. They're not the same size as the pin that they come with. Um, so once you get them in, usually when you press these in, you will flatten them out a little bit. No different than valve guides. Um, whenever they replace valve guides and cylinder heads. It's the same deal. They do all the same technique, basically. They press the guides in, and then you have to do a final hone, and you use um, a reamer to ream them to the size that you need for the valve guide stem. Well, I'm sorry, the valve stem. And it's the same deal here. So these, they're just small. They're, you know, the pins won't fit through them at all when you buy them. So once you get these in, oh, and another thing, there's a groove that is inside these bushings and there's a hole in a certain spot that has to line up with the hole where the grease fitting is. And them grooves go up at an angle. They go up at an angle, they pass the hole and then they go down at an angle. And these holes are offset, they're not in the center. So you have to make sure you put these in in the right direction. That's why I've got a mark here. I marked this where the hole would be for me to line up when I drove them in. And I went ahead and cleaned everything up. I put the grease fittings in and I, I made sure that when I you know, threw grease in there that it came out and it did. The top and the bottom on both sides. So now what I've been doing is basically opening this hole up to match. So I didn't have a reamer. Um, so what I did was I, I measured the size of this pin and it came out to, I think it was a 0 .811, 811, 0.811. So they say that you want the clearance to be around two thousandths between the pin and the bushing. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, that's kind of what you're shooting for. So what I did was I got online and I bought this reamer, it's adjustable. I got it off of Amazon. It was really cheap. It wasn't much money. Um, I think it was about, well, actually I got free shipping with Amazon Prime and I, it was under $17 I got this. And it's an adjustable one that goes to just under the size that I'm looking for to just over the size that I'm looking for. They have them and you can buy a whole set of these that's different sizes. And I just got the one that I needed. So I'll just show you real quick basically what it looks like. I've already done, I'm pretty close on this side. It, it, the pin will drop in. So let me see. I mean, the, the pin, like it's, you know, it, it works fine there. And I've got it right now to where it drops in pretty dang good. It gets a little bit tight. So what I did when, when I got to this point, I drove it in and I could see where the pin was touching the bushing. Um, so I just went one more thread and ran it through. I think I want to do one more. So I'm going to, I'm going to run, do one more pass through here. And the reason this one is still on the car is because this steering bar I could not get out of here. I could not get that thing out of that spindle. We took the nut, I took the nut off. I heated it and I was, I just couldn't get it out. I didn't want to damage the threads on this at all. So I just left it and I've been doing it on 
the vehicle. And I really wanted to use a drill or some sort of tool just to have a constant spin on this, but I couldn't, I just couldn't get this to fit in there. It's a square head. If I had an adapter to go from a male to male, um, I could have put it on my air tool or even an, a drill, but I couldn't. I've been using this 10 millimeter. So I just basically sit it in there and I grab a hole of it and I'll turn it just like this. And I did notice sometimes that it did not want to drop down anymore. So I just tap it and you can hear it start cutting. It's only opened up just a little bit more, so it's it's not hard to turn. And you can probably open it up two threads to really take a lot out, but I just did one thread at a time, just so it wouldn't be too hard to cut. But pull up on it while I'm turning it. And it's coming right up. Then I clean any shavings off of this, which is not, it don't have very much because like I say, I'm just doing a cleanup on it right now. And we'll go ahead and do the bottom one. And I'll just be pulling up on it while I'm shaving it. And that was it. You can tell when it stops stops cutting. Now we'll just go in reverse. Come right out. The only problem is you gotta watch out, these things will these little shavings will stick you. This should do it. I'll run this through it. That cleans it up. Actually, it don't even need it. It's cleaned up really nice. That thing really cuts nice. It doesn't gouge it or nothing. But I like the run that through there. Make it a little smoother. See, I thought that was going to be the last one, and there is like hardly no movement at all, just a very little bit. That's I'm definitely happy with that because I tell you, before you could get that pin and you could do this number with it, it was just wore out. The bushing was a war slap out. So, what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and squirt some grease in here. Um, just if there's any metal shavings in there. It'll come out when I squirt some grease in there. I'll wipe it out, have it all greased up, and throw it back together. All right, I got this camera set back up so you guys can see this. I'm gonna go ahead and put the pin in and put the bearing and all that. So I noticed when I took this apart, um, not sure if it was original stuff, but uh, I kind of kept an eye on the way things came apart and pretty much sure this is the way it's going to go back together too so it comes with a bearing um, it's got obviously you know has an inside part to the bearing an outside part and this side does stick up so I don't think it matters which way this goes up or down the way this is designed it's not gonna rub wrong in any way. So I'm gonna put this side down just so dirt will not be as easy to get inside here. And it basically is gonna go right there. It's gotta go on the weight side of it. So 
with here's some washers I got to put them on so when you put this on obviously when the truck is down on the ground the weight of the tire is going to push up so this goes on the bottom on the other side you can't even put it on the top because the actual arm that comes off of it would hit the straight axle so it definitely goes on the bottom um, I thought maybe so this came with two washers per side when I took it apart the two washers were on top I thought maybe one would go in between here and here and then another would go in between somewhere but it really makes no sense to have a washer on the bottom because like the top of this this one's not going to turn at all the bottom part on the inside is going to follow the spindle so I think what these are, the reason they come with two of them, you basically put that in there and you slide both shims in there. They both fit in there pretty much perfect. I've already got um, the bushings lubed up with grease. I'm just going to, if it's too tight, you can actually just do one, um, but that feels pretty good. If I only had one shim in there, it would it'd be you know a little bit up and down play, and that's why they put two of them in there. I don't think three would work. I did try putting three of them in and it was just way too tight, so I'm gonna go with two. Okay, so I got everything sitting in there. Got the bearing in there, I got the two shims on the top should be pretty close this here is it's got a metal sleeve that's got a little rail on it like a little cup comes with a little felt and this just helps keep the dirt out from the top falling in and it basically slides on this pin just like this because once this pin is in and this notch lines up with that hole this is going to be perfect up there you'll see I already, I've already trial fitted all this before I even was ready to put it together so I want to make sure that that is lined up straight of course it does spin so once it's in there I can always turn it but we are perfect and oh man that's perfect so with this felt piece in there and this little washer that the felt piece sits in that notch is dead center of that hole all right so i got everything down in there that pin is dead center you can see it's supposed to be dead center this thing's got these little grooves in them and this thing only it's only designed to go in one way it's supposed to go in from the front come out the back and the nut was on the back so if it doesn't go in you want to make sure that that groove is not turned this way it has to be perfectly straight and it has to be down far enough so and then when you put this in you obviously want to put these in facing that pin don't have to do no grease or anything because that pin doesn't move inside here it just stays stationary I mean you can put grease in it you know just to keep it from just to keep it from rusting um, the pin has grease on it and I did just put a little bit in there just to keep it from rusting but you pretty much put that in there like that I can actually knock it on in don't really need to because the nuts gonna pull it in it does come with a lock washer I'm gonna go ahead and do a little Loctite I use the orange which is high strength but removable it's not as strong as the red you don't have to put heat to it to remove them And, you know, I'm sure these have a, a torque rating to them, but 
These are pretty stout pieces. I'm gonna say, if you wanted to torque it, probably 40, 45 foot-pounds would be plenty. Or just throw a little, just do it by hand. You ain't gonna break that, that thing is pretty strong. I like to, you can feel it getting pulled through. it only pull through so far and stop because it is tapered, that pin. Oh, that's probably 70, 80 foot pounds right there, easy. And that's it. It actually sits in there, in, in this hole, almost flush. It's in just a little bit. And that is it for this side. So that's cool. Now I can put the uh, backing plate back on, get the brakes on, get the new hose hooked up here. I got new brake lines and everything for this whole truck. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the other side going. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up this other one on the passenger side, because it was still a little bit tight. And since I've got it off the vehicle, I can use the vise on this one. I didn't have to worry about using the, the 10 millimeter wrench like I did over there. This makes it a lot easier. I've already made the pass with this size and it, it's still a little bit tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. You loosen this one up a little bit and then you tighten this one up and it pushes them all down. And as it, as it pushes them down, they get a little bit bigger. Say you, if these get stuck, they're just in grooves. If, if these get stuck, you can just put a little bit of oil in there and they'll slide. But you just loosen this, you try to keep them in because they basically have, they're tapered on the ends so they will stay inside these nuts here. So every time you loosen this a little bit, you tighten this one a little bit, and it shoves them down. And then once you're all done, you just want to make sure they're all good and tight. And then I just like to look over it and make sure none of them popped out. Like I say, these are tapered on the bottom and tapered on the top. And these nuts are also reverse tapered. So when you tighten these up, it pulls them in. So let's see, I don't want to go too big, but that right there feels perfect. There's not, I mean, honestly, it's probably only one thread bigger. You just push it down a little bit. If, if this was really hard to cut, then I'd be, It'd be going too big, I think. I just like to do it a little bit at a time. I don't want to go too big on these. And you can see it shaves just a little bit off. You can see the shavings falling. And ideally what you want is you want one of these reamers to be long enough to go through both. You know, that's what you really want. This one is not long enough to go through both at the same time. You would basically go through the first one and once you get through the get through the first one then you'll get through the second one the first one will act as a guide for the second one so you you know it's dead center of both holes so if i would have took these to a machine shop they would have all that problem was i couldn't get the other spindle off no matter what i tried i could not get it off we tried heating it we tried everything and i just didn't I couldn't get it off, so I was like, heck with it, I'll just do it on the car. So I had to get this kind. And I, I ordered it, I got it in two days from Amazon. And it worked fine. Like that side went on great. Got it lined up perfect. So I just go in reverse and I kind of pull up on it. It's not really cutting, but it's coming back off. And there it is. Then I turn it over and do the other side. You can, you can hear it cutting, but I don't have, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on this at all. If I had it opened up further, it would be harder to turn and really be cutting. But like I say, I'm so close 
that I don't want to go too big. So I'm just doing a little bit at a time. You can tell right there it stopped cutting. Try to keep even, even pressure on both sides, you know, so it doesn't cut off to one side. When I'm going down, coming up, I just keep pressure on both sides. And then, of course, when I'm all done, I just get the old hone. This is the, the lifter bore hone we talked about. It makes it look, honestly, you don't even need this. That thing really cuts really nice. It's not hacked up, nothing. But, that would make it look even better. got it i'm gonna go ahead and end it here i appreciate y'all checking out the video and uh, please like subscribe share the video and we'll catch you on the next one